in our discussion. Thus far, in our discussion on particle physics, we said that particles can have two types of charges. So we spoke of electric charges that are carried, for example, by electrons. And when two electrons interact with one another, they exchange the fundamental particle we call the photon. And this photon is said to carry or mediate the electromagnetic force that causes these two electrons electrons to repel one another when they come close to one another. Now we also discussed the charge that can exist on a quark. So quarks not only have electric charge, but quarks are said to have a charge known as the color charge. And this color charge between two quarks basically causes the strong nuclear force. So we say that when two quarks are approach one another, they exchange a fundamental particle known as the gluon. And this gluon is the fundamental particle that is said to carry or mediate the strong force also known as the color force which comes from the color charge on our two quarks. Now, in a very similar way, we believe that yet another type of charge exists known as the weak charge that is different from the electric charge or the color charge. And this weak charge that particles have basically leads to the weak force also known as the weak nuclear force. And the three fundamental particles that are believed to carry or mediate the weak nuclear force are the W negative, the W positive, and the Z neutral particles. So the Z has no charge, the W positive has a positive one charge, and the W negative has a negative charge. So using this information, we want to use or we want to draw the Feynman diagram for the beta negative decay of a neutron that decays into a proton, an electron, as well as the electron antineutrino, anti knowing that this particle interaction, this particle decay takes place as a result of weak nuclear forces. So before we draw and examine the following Feynman diagram that actually describes this particle decay, let's actually discuss what takes place inside our neutron. So recall that a neutron consists of three quarks. We have the up quark, we have the down quark, and we have a down quark. The proton, on the other hand, consists of three quarks, the up quark, the up quark, quark and the down quark. So that means for a, for a neutron to actually transform into a proton, one of the quarks, specifically the down quark of our neutron, must actually transform into the up quark that is found in our proton. So let's say this middle D quark, the down quark, has to transform into the up quark. Now, what exactly is the electric charge on our down quark? Well, the down quark has a charge of negative one-third. Now, the electric charge on the up quark is positive two-thirds. So, when the down quark inside our neutron transforms into the up quark inside our uh, proton, there is a change in charge. So, we go from negative one one third to positive two thirds. Now, what exactly is the difference between these charges? Well, we have negative one third minus positive two thirds. This gives us negative one. So that means there is a change in electric charge <clears throat> given by negative 1e. So because in any type of interaction, particle interaction, there must be a conservation of electric charge, that means when the neutron is transformed into the proton, it must release a quantity of charge that is given by negative 1e. Now because we know that this interaction or reaction 
reaction takes place as a result of weak nuclear forces, that means our neutron must release one of these fundamental particles that mediate or carry the weak nuclear force. Now because there must be a charge of negative 1 released, the only type of particle that carries that negative 1 charge is our W negative. So that means when our neutron decays into a proton, that is when one of its down quarks transforms into the up quark, it releases an amount of charge given by negative 1 and that is carried by our fundamental particle, the W negative. So, if we examine the following Feynman diagram, we basically have our up, down, and down quark. So this is our neutron. As the neutron travels, it decays into the proton that is given by up, up, down quarks. So we see that our down quark basically is transformed into the up quark in the process that releases this virtual fundamental particle known as the W negative. Virtual simply means we cannot actually observe this experimentally. It takes place very, very quickly. Now, we know that in the process, the proton is produced, but also an electron and the anti and the electron antineutrino. So this virtual fundamental particle, W negative particle, must be transformed into that electron as well as our electron antineutrino. So this is shown by the following two red arrows. So basically, when the down quark converts into the up quark, charge changes from negative one-third to positive two-thirds. So to conserve electric charge, fundamental particle that is emitted must carry a charge of negative one. And because we know that this fundamental particle carries a weak force, a weak nuclear force, it must be either one of these, and because the charge is negative 1, it must be specifically this particle. So this must mean that the mediator of the weak force is the W negative particle. And once it is released by that neutron, that neutron is transformed into the proton because one of the quarks transforms from down to up quark. And then this mediator particle, our fundamental W negative particle, quickly converts into an electron and the electron into the electron as well as our electron antineutrino. So this this Feynman diagram basically describes graphically how our beta negative decay actually trans uh, happens, how it occurs. So we have our neutron transforming to the proton in the process releasing our fundamental particle that carries the weak nuclear force and this then basically transforms into the electron as well as the electron anti-neutrino.